Spectra Layers 11 is out. Where the previous version introduced a whole bunch of AI or machine learning based tools to unmix, version 11 is more about evolving and further improving that in more ways. And there are lots of improvements done in other areas as well. The new features guide for Spectra 11 comes with 17 pages of info, I won't bother you with every detail of that, instead in this video I'll focus on which are in my opinion the highlights of all the new features and improvements. For you who don't know Spectra Layers, it's a program to edit audio. It comes with many in-depth editing and restoration functionality and very good stem unmixing tools, which means vocal isolation or removing for instance. This makes Spectra Layers very well suited for post-production work and in-depth editing for mixing and how I mainly use it for mastering. The biggest visual change in Spectra Layers 11 is that Spectra Layers is basically copying the Isotope RX layout. All modules now are visible at the right side and you can sort them by type in a few ways. I personally think this is a big improvement over the previous version since it requires one less click into a menu, even though the old modules module is still available. I personally use Spectra Layers a lot and the main reason for that is the ERA compatibility. You get all functions of Spectra Layers inside for instance Cubase. That's how I use it, I don't have to leave Cubase to do restoration, mastering, unmixing and more. The big catch with that is that even though ARA is an extension, with Spectra Layers it is a VST component and only works in DOS which support VST ARA. That means you cannot use it in for instance Logic. For Pro Tools there is a bridge function available to get files into Spectra Layers. One big workflow improvement that has been finally included is the option to adjust the fades of a selected frequency region. Fade is often important to get a much smoother transition from processed area to unprocessed. I use it all the time. Now on the previous versions you could only do this before selecting an area and you had to reselect an area when you adjusted these fades. In Spectral Layers 11 you can adjust this without the need of reselecting a frequency area. One way to do that is to press the right mouse button when you select a region while you hold the left mouse button when you select the region. This gives you these extra controls on top of the pop-up menu. I wouldn't mind having these specific controls here at all times. Another way is to press Ctrl Shift M on PC or Command Shift M when you are on a Mac and you get this dialog. The third way is to use the Selection Fade tool. The opposite of this fade tool is the selection sharpen tool. You can remove a fade and include more of the selection range. Before we go more in depth in the unmixing features, please make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. This video is made possible by DistroKid. Cover songs is probably one of the many types of songs you would love to do, but uploading to a streaming platform is always a hassle due to copyrights and required fee because you cover an original song. DistroKit makes this very easy for you by offering the option to do this all for you for $12 per song per year when you have a DistroKit subscription. Use my link in the description to get 7% off of your first year on a DistroKit. Unmixing has become a huge part of Spectra Layers and all of these processes are time consuming and how long something takes to unmix depends on the power of your CPU and the length of the audio file. For instance I decided to unmix overheads on a recording because there was some nasty bleed of bass guitar and electric guitar I wanted to get rid of. All songs of this recording session are imported into one Cubase project and I bounce the entire overhead track into one file. That way I can do unmix and let Spectra Layers do its thing while I do something else. The file is over an hour long and I use the highest quality setting and the CPU is an AMD Ryzen 9 3900. This took around 3.5 hours to process. This is how it sounds, I'll toggle the unmixed parts on and off.
pretty impressive and useful when you have to work with a track like this. Long files like this, when you do it in Cubase, will create a huge project file as you can see. Now it's almost 4 gigabytes in size. I always do a mixing, do the things I want and then make the extension permanent. This is basically rendering and committing the changes. That way the project size will be pretty much normal again. When you do unmix it will eat CPU cycles and fill up RAM. Like here at 58% CPU and 7.7 GB of RAM in use. Now let's unmix a very dense song. I used the extreme setting and the unmixing of this 2.5 minute song takes about 13 minutes. I am the spice of bodies. My moves come to you. And I'm comfortable. This is actually impressive. Yes, there are some artifacts, but for a track this dense, this is really good. It even nicely grabs the chorus on the bass guitar here. There's a new tool which is extremely useful for drums, and that is the transient pencil. With this you can easily increase transients in a layer. It sort of adds a sharp sounding noise attack. It's handy to add attack to kicks and snares when needed. The layers you get after unmixing have a few interesting options. First of all, which is not so special, is to rebalance the layers. What's more interesting is that each of these layers now has its own envelope option. You can draw volume changes with these unmixed layers. Furthermore, you can drag and drop these unmixed layers when you use it in ARA mode. You can use this for instance to draw out a vocal and drop it on the timeline of Cubase to have even more control. Other new features worth checking out are unmixed chorus, unmixed crowd noise and a voice declipper. Now when you have to do a lot of the same actions, like unmix song or remove crowd and add the same plugins and settings, you now have modules chain. It's basically a plugin chain you can apply. And this can be used in batch processing as well. Ideal for large amounts of audio files that are basically the same. And I think that will work best in post production, you can even dedicate a complete workstation just for that. All in all, in my opinion, version 11 is another great update from Spectral Layers and it has become a very capable alternative to Isotope RX11. A direct comparison video is in the making, check out my RX11 review first.